Delaney. We swing. Double, double triggers, everybody. <laughs> it's like two lightning helixes to the face and 11. This is what you all came here for, everybody. Gleeful Demolition. Boom. Make a bunch of tokens. Thraben Inspector. Make two more tokens. <laughs> yes! Oh, opponent! Oh, you should have let me swing. I wanted to do double damage there. Aww. Hello, my fiery friends. The Infernal Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be continuing our descent into Dustmourne as we continually breathe new life into old deck archetypes. This time around, however, we're going to be doing it with a bunch of creepy toys. That's right. So without further ado, join me today in the Explorer format for a deck that I'm simply calling Toys in the Attic. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. Or, for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So our toy deck today is going to be based on Boros colors. You're looking at an average mana curve of about 1.9. So this white and red deck is going to have 32 creatures, 4 sorceries, 12 artifacts, 4 enchantments, and 20 lands. We're going to go super wide, make a handful of tokens, and we're also going to either try to pump them up with a couple of key cards that just can finish off our opponent, or we're going to use one key card that's a new toy from Duskmorn that can overwhelm our opponent by burning them out. But how exactly are we going to be able to pull that off with a bunch of small, weak creatures? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin talking about the deck. Starting in the one drop slot, we'll have Novice Inspector and we have Thraben Inspector. Both of these cards do the exact same thing. They make a clue token, which you can utilize later on to sacrifice to draw a card. Brand new from Duskhorn is going to be Clockwork Percussionist. This little monkey toy has haste and it's a 1-1. When it dies, however, you can exile the top card of your library. and You may play that card until the end of your next turn. So it's great for chump blocking, or you can utilize it to sacrifice to Gleeful Demolition. But we'll talk about this in just a moment. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Voldren Epicure here is also another great option here in the one drop slot where it enters, deals one damage to each opponent, and creates a blood token, similar to a clue token, although you will have to, of course, discard a card to draw a card. In the two drop slot, you'll have Resolute Reinforcements. It enters and creates a Soldier Token, which helps us with the go-wide strategy. Also, a brand new card from Duskmorn is going to be Split Skin Doll. So this artifact toy here is a 2-1, and when it enters, you get to draw a card. However, you may have to discard a card if you do not have a creature with a power level of 2 or less. But the real start of the show is going to be here in the 2-drop slot as well. It's going to be Arabella Abandoned Doll. Can we talk about how creepy that art is for just a moment? Oh man, it's just very unnerving. Arabella here is a 2-mana toy. It's a legendary creature. It's a 1-3 that also reads, whenever the Abandoned Doll attacks, it deals X damage to each opponent and and you gain X life, where X is the number of creatures you control with power 2 or less. So, this is actually incredibly powerful, and it's actually quite scary for what it's capable of doing. If you manage to go super wide with your strategy, you should be able to either burn out your opponent or go wide to beat them down. Either way, it's going to be frightening for your opponent. In the 3 drop slot, you'll have a single copy of Imodane's Recruiter here, so this is a great way to finish off your opponent if you need all of your toys and other creatures to go wide, and also get a little bit of extra pump and give them haste. You can also, of course, play the Adventure side to give yourself two 2-2 two -two Knights with Vigilance. And then finally in the 3-drop slot, you'll have Delaney, Streetwise Lookout. I've talked about this card in a previous deck tech a couple months out, but for those of you who didn't see that, let's get a quick refresher for all of you to catch up on. Delaney Streetwise Lookout is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two legendary human scout, and it says, Creatures you control with power 2 or less can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater. If an ability of a creature you control with power 2 or less triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So, take if you will for a second. If this is out, you can trigger off your Imodane's Recruiter to do a little extra damage, or you can have Arabella here do double damage and double life gain with a single swing. Circling back over to the 1-drop slot for support and non-creature spells, you have Gleeful Demolition. I just mentioned this earlier with the Clockwork Percussionist, but this is actually a really good target for it. So, Gleeful Demolition allows you to destroy an artifact. However, if you control the artifact, you can create three 1-1 Red Phyrexian Goblin Creature Tokens, which just helps you with the go-wide strategy. 
In the two drop slot, you'll have Case of the Gateway Express. So when this enters, you basically get to pick one creature you don't control and then just do a bunch of pinging damage with each creature that you have. So if you have already a pretty wide board, you should be able to take out something even as big as Shieldred without any problem at all. Now, of course, when you swing with at least three or more creatures, you'll get the Case of the Solve, and then you'll get an extra pump of plus one, plus zero to your whole team. And then finally, in the... Is it two drop or is it... Or, or is it six drop? I can never really tell. On half of this card as an enchantment room, you have Dollmaker Shop. On this side, whenever one or more non-toy creatures you control attacks a player, you get to create a 1-1 white toy artifact creature token. So this will help you, again, keep your board state going with more and more tokens. And for six mana, if you manage to pull this off, you will basically get a massive board state with Porcelain Gallery. So for six mana, creatures you control have a base power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control, which is great, again, against dicks that are kind of stalemating you, and you just need a way to just kind of finish them off and just overwhelm them with extra power. As far as the land base is concerned, normally this is when I tell you you're going to be as cheap as possible. However, the main deck is already budget friendly as is, so we were able to splurge a little bit and get us some actual shock lands. I know, I know, shocking, if you will. <laughs> but also, we were able to get Clifftop Retreat as our rare lands of choice to make our deck a lot more consistent and easier to cast our creatures. But of course, we'll have some Six Mountains, two Sheffield Dunes if we need to just pump the whole team as well, and some Planes just to round out the package. Now, I'm going to recommend, honestly, this deck is probably better suited for best of one. However, if you do want to play this in best of three, here's your best options for the sideboard. So going into that, you'll have Deafening Silence, which mostly just shuts down control decks out there and also combo decks for you. You'll have Soul Lantern as your catch-all removal for Graveyard Hate, and also can be a target for Gleeval Demolition in a pinch. Impact Tremors, if you just need to close out the game, maybe you are playing a mirror match, again, of Boros Tokens, go wide Strategies, White Weenies, so this can help you, again, just kind of get a little extra damage in, just to close out the game a little faster. You'll have Rip Apart as well as going to be your Artifact Enchantment Hate, and it can also hit a creature or Planeswalker for 3 damage. And then finally, if you are dealing with a lot of Wraths, you also have on the back end here Make a Stand, which you can then put in to give all of your creatures a little extra pump and indestructible until end of turn. But with the deck deck out of the way, the real question we need to ask ourselves is, is it possible for a go-wide strategy to work in the Explorer format that isn't Boros Convoke on a budget? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Well, there's only one way to find out, so I don't know about you, but I'm actually really excited to utilize Arabella here because she actually is an incredibly powerful card and very frightening to use. So let's take this deck into the Explorer format and see how well it does. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we beat down our opponent with a bunch of tokens and toys? Well, we don't have the mana to cast anything here, which is kind of awkward. So let's go ahead, let's mulligan this. Okay, this is a little better. I mean, we can't do anything turn one, but I think we can still hold off with this. So put back the resolute reinforcements. And then I guess the mountain comes down first. I think our opponent thinks we're going to be a burn deck. All right, swamp. Duress. Oh. Got you, opponent. Nothing you can throw away. But they do get to peek at our game plan, though. All right, so cliff top retreat number one. We will then pass. We'll put down the resolute reinforcements as soon as we have their turn end. All right, resolute reinforcements coming in. At the very least, our split skin dolls can help us draw some cards. So we should be okay for a little bit. Is the fatal push coming? Children's Edict? Okay. Well, I mean, it's annoying, but it's fine. Split skin doll. Get draw a card. Put down the flip top retreat. Novice inspector. Take a token. Investigate. Hit our opponent down to 19. All right, opponent. I mean, we still can put down a little bit of a threat versus them. All depends on again what they're trying to do. Unholy annex. Okay. So they, okay. So they'll start drawing cards, but we still have an edge here, so I'm not feeling too concerned just yet. Draw another card. Another resolute reinforcements. Lethal demolition. All right, we're going wide here. Not too bad, right? Down to 13 opponents. Clock is ticking. If we can just get at least now one of our finishers, we should be able to win very easily here. Okay. However, this room is a little bit concerning. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. If you control a demon, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, opponent. We don't have any non-creature spells for you to throw away. So too bad. Too bad. I think we should be okay. They draw a card. They go down to 11. Okay. Well, that definitely helps us out quite a bit. We're not going to cast anything now because I just want to make sure that if our opponent does start going the wrath route, we should be able to just get there with what we have. Okay, we lose one of our toys. Down to four. All right. Well, opponent, clock is ticking now. 
Do you have an answer to beat us? Yes or no? And they are out of time, everybody. They have had enough. All right, yes. Nothing super crazy there, but you did see toys and tokens still can do their thing. So Boros, Convoke, even if this is not really a Convoke deck, can still hold its own and still put a lot of threats down very quickly. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we beat down our opponent with a bunch of toys and tokens? Well, the good news is we do have actually some things we can cast, which is great, but we just can't cast everything just yet. Still, we're gonna keep this hand because only the Volder and Epicure can't be cast, which is not a really big deal for us. We have, I think, enough to slowly start building up things against our opponent. So let's begin with the Raven Inspector, and we investigate. All right, opponent, what do you got? What are you playing against us today? All right, tap land, stuff consider no. All right, well that's fine. Chef of Dunes, let's play, let's play Dollmaker Shop now. We'll start building up our toy army very quickly here. Make a toy, down to 19. The toys are coming, everybody. All right, Swamp, okay, nothing yet, that's okay. That's great for us. We're gonna hold off for a little bit here because I have a resolute reinforcements in case our opponent doesn't manage to just blow up our Draven Inspector. All right, make another toy. Down to 17. I'm not sure what our opponent's playing, but they better act quickly because we will snowball very fast with the Dollmaker shot. Liliana the Veil. All right, well, I'm okay with that. That really doesn't hurt us all that much. Nobody knows okay, discard a card. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. We'll throw away the Voldren Epicure because we don't really need that now but it's just gonna get worse for you, opponent. <laughs> Resolute reinforcements. All right, so it's kind of awkward we don't have the red mana, but it's actually, that's not hurting us all that bad right now. So, split skin doll, draw a card. Another Vulture and here we can't play. Annoying, but it's fine. It's totally fine, everybody. So from here, do we really care about Liliana right now at this point? I don't think we do. Let's just focus on just hitting our opponent here. Make another toy. Even if they make us discard, we're at a point now where we have more than enough creatures out where they can't really stop us unless they have a wrath. Shield, right? Ooh. Okay. Well. We finally have a way to deal with her. So don't worry. We will deal with shield, right? Okay, opponent making us discard again. We'll throw away a Voldren Epicure number two. That's perfectly fine. Draw a card. Wow, we keep getting all these red cards we can't really play. But even so, we're still doing pretty good here. So, here we go. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. Case of the Gateway Express. Take out that shield. Oh my goodness, this feels so good right now. Bye bye, shield. <laughs> Big swing here. Woo! All right, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. Down to four opponents. And they get the pump. Can you stop our little army of toys and white weenies? Four cards in hand, opponent. You need a wrath to stop us if you have one. Thoughtseize? That's fine. That doesn't really hurt us. Sure, opponent, take whatever card you want. Yeah, Voldren Epicure number three. It don't matter. We couldn't play those anyway. They make a sacrifice a creature. That's totally cool, too. I'm okay with that. We'll throw away our soldier token. Okay, what are your last two cards, opponent? Is there anything else in hand that you can stop us with? Wow. Drawing out of desperation there, are we? We will throw away the Gleeful Demolition. I don't think we're going to need that at this point. I'm pretty sure we've already won. Go for the throat. Taking down our only thing that's not a toy. And it doesn't even matter because we have finally won. Woohoo! Take that, opponents. Wow, they just couldn't stop our army of dolls. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we stop our opponent with a bunch of tokens and toys and go wide? Well... Ooh, this actually looks like a really sweet hand. We get the three-bit inspector on turn one, turn two, Gleeful Demolition or Arabella here, and we can actually just close them out with Delaney. I love this hand. Let's keep this hand. Assuming our opponent doesn't have anything to disrupt us completely, we should be good to go here. So Sacred Foundry first, and play the three-bit inspector. Makes that token, and pass. What do you got, opponents? What do you got against us? Okay, green. Hmm, well... That's actually good for us. So here's how we do this. Arabella first. Swing here. Down to 19. Okay, so we have two options here. If our opponent doesn't play anything super strong, we actually can go super big right here with Delaney and just ping down our opponent with Arabella. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so delicious here. This is where the fun begins. 
Delaney. We swing. Double, double triggers, everybody. <laughs> it's like two lightning helixes to the face and 11. Oh my goodness, I think this is the dream. This right here is going to be the dream kill, everybody. Watch. If our opponent plays anything. Okay. And that's it, everybody. This is it. This is what you all came here for, everybody. Gleeful Demolition. Boom. Make a bunch of tokens. Thraben Inspector. Make two more tokens. <laughs> yes! Oh, opponent! Oh, you should have let me swing. I wanted to do double damage there. Aw. It's okay, everybody. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to actually do that one. That would have been hilarious. Man, we had two tokens right there, and we were about to then make a Gleeful Demolition for a bunch more tokens, and we could have swung for like an insane amount of damage. Aw, if only our opponent just let us do that. But that's okay. You get the idea, everybody. That right there was the nut draw. That was the dream. Don't think I'll get that ever again, but I was happy we got that on camera. And there you have it already. So that was Toys in the Attic for you for the Explorer format. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play this deck in any way, shape, or form? To be perfectly honest with you, I love this deck and I really was pleased at how well it turned out. We just had some really explosive plays. And more often than not, because we have a ton of one drops, many times our opponent, even as you saw, they can counterspell us, they can spot removal. Dollmaker Shop is an all-star card and I absolutely love what this card can do. It's actually quite scary if it does start snowballing. Now, having said that, I will acknowledge at least one thing that we didn't actually see in the matches today, and that is our biggest weakness, which is we are susceptible to Wraths. In other words, if our opponent just blows up the whole board a couple of times, our deck doesn't get a chance to do much of anything, and you will end up being very, very sad. However, that's also why if you are playing this in, at least in best of three, you do have some options in the sideboard. And even so, there are some plays you can do to just help rebuild. So you can just utilize some of your tokens here to then draw more cards. You can then utilize other cards like Split Skin Doll here, Resolute Reinforcements to rebuild the board very quickly if your opponent tries to stop you. Now, if you do like the deck as is, and you do want to take it to the next level, stick around everybody because those of you who are this far into the video, you are my true fiery friends. And because of that, you'll be able to easily see how awesome and more powerful this deck can truly be. Now, if you are looking to upgrade the deck in any way, here's what I'm going to recommend for you. The good news is the majority of the main deck doesn't really need to be swapped out. However, I would probably take out the Vulgar and Epicures and instead put in Warden of the Inner Sky. This actually will give you a much more stronger payoff and will help you kind of filter your draws as you scry and put plus one plus one counters on the Warden, giving you at least something that can not only fly later on, but also do a lot of heavier damage if, say, like any of your other smaller creatures just can't cut it. Also, the other thing I would just recommend for the main deck, of course, is upgrade the mana base with just a couple extra lands. Thankfully, you already have the most important ones built into the budget version, but now you can add an Inspiring Vantage if you're able to, and of course, a couple of Battlefield Forges, so you'll trim down some mountains, some plains, and trim down one Chef of Dunes for the main deck. As far as the upgrades to the sideboard, here's again what I would also recommend for you. Keep your Soul Guide Lanterns, however, trim one and instead put in a single copy of Graft Digger's Cage if you are having to deal with anybody that's trying to do Graveyard Shenanigans. You'll have a single copy of Assemble the Players here. This is just going to help you get you some pseudo card advantage if you are starting to run dry against certain decks out there, just to ensure you can keep churning through your deck and keep casting your spells. If your opponent is a little too combo happy or too control happy and you want to slow them down, we're going to play copies of High Noon instead, and this will be great because although it will slow you down as as well by forcing everyone to only cast one spell each turn at the very end if you do need a little bit of extra damage you can then sacrifice this when you need to to do five damage to any target keep the rip aparts they are slow but they are at least flexible enough and then a couple extra things that you'll want to upgrade is make a stand will get swapped out for dawn's truce here this will give you and your entire team hexproof and indestructible even if you gift a card to them honestly the gifting a card to an opponent is a small price to pay to protect your whole board against anything your opponent throws at you and then finally to round out the package we're going to take out those impact tremors and upgrade you to war leader's call it is a little more expensive but it gives all of your creatures a little extra pump and can do extra damage if say like you want to swap out say delaney or arabella to do more damage and just beat down your opponent and now that we have all of that out of the way here are my final thoughts that i want to give on the deck to be honest i really love what this deck is trying to do and i'm actually kind of surprised at how well it does it without feeling like it's just overstepping the balance or kind of just being a watered down clone of Boros Convoke. While Boros Convoke may have arguably a couple more explosive turns, as you saw today, our deck is definitely not one to be ignored. Dollmaker Shop really makes a difference for the deck as well as Arabella to giving you a much more unique game plan versus what the Convoke decks are doing. 
To put it another way, if you are a fan of White Weenies of the Past, but if you are a fan of also the Convoke decks, and if you're a fan of both of those strategies, but you want to look at it from a different angle, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try, and I assure you, when you can still go wide with your tokens and your toys, you'll have a lot of fun doing so, and you'll be very surprised at how much damage it can do very quickly, and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!